Welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, we're going to be unboxing Commands and Colors Medieval from GMT Games, based on the Commands and Colors system by Richard Borg. This includes 19 battle scenarios during the Byzantine Empire, the Byzantine Empire versus the Sassanid Persians. They're so sassy. Um, so this, can, you know, obviously is in the uh, uh, the line of Memoir 44, Command and Colors, Napoleonics, Ancients, uh, Battle Cry, so on and so forth, where card-driven, moving your forces, attacking, so on and so forth. So uh, let's take a look. I've not played actually any of the block versions of GMT of the Commands and Colors series. I've pretty much stuck with uh, Memoir 44, played The Great War, uh, um, so on and so forth. So, uh, this will be interesting to see how they present it. I've, again, this uh, this uh, series has been produced by many different companies, um, and this is the first in the medieval line, I believe. Another big, thick box, very heavy box. Goodness gracious, this thing's heavy. So, start out as expected. Got a big bag of blocks. Right? I'm not going to take those out because they're big wooden blocks. Some are slightly larger. Some are square. And some are more rectangles. They're in a purple and tan hue. All right, so we got those. We've got our dice, our custom face dice of, uh, of uh, there's eight of them, I believe. Big, thick, chunky plastic dice, probably a, I don't know. Let's see, Let's see how big they are. They seem bigger than normal dice. They are 16 millimeter. So they're not normal, your normal 12 or 14. Okay. And then you got your cards that you're going to use to, uh, you know, you play them and you advance one side or the other, one in all three or uh, so on and so forth. So it's the medieval line. I don't know what is different. Um, each of the games in the series across all the different publishers, uh, the rules introduce something uh, unique to the system. So you get the rule book, standard GMT matte finish, um, full color, examples of play, so on and so forth, and your scenario. So it's all in one scenario, uh, rules and scenario book. Uh, looks like we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 scenarios. Uh, 19, counting the one in black there. Which is probably a training scenario. Then you got sh your sheets of stickers. All right, so they're full color. And uh, they give you some spares in case you have sticky fingers and stick the stickers to the wrong sticky thing. So they're in sets. So we've got uh, one, two, three, four, Five sticker sheets. You got some counters. They're obviously going to modify uh, units. You'll place those, obviously, I would guess, with the units, also in the purple and the tan. And then, just like various other iterations of the game, you got a sheet of uh, tile overlays. There are three of those. And they give you uh, like a hill that can go on the board or a village or a fair or something like that. So they'll, they'll have you set the, the board up, you know, lay out the board and then you'll put the overlays down to based on the scenario. So there's four of those, they punch pretty cleanly. And they don't wanna go back in, so we'll just leave them like that. And then we got a reference card. This is a game for two players, so there should be two reference cards. And there are Two reference cards as predicted. You also have the inspired action reference of which there's two which are special cards that can be played and these are references to tell you what they can do. So there's one side for the Persians, one side for the Byzantines and two copies of that for each one, one for each player. Um, so the board itself is going to be pretty plain. Um, it'll be divided into thirds. The actual uh, terrain on the board will all be, should all be just 
uh, grass, open field, and then you'll, like I said, modify it with those uh, those hex pieces. Now, by nature, this is not a solo friendly game. Let me get this board open here. However, and it is a elongated board. So you got the dividing lines that show your one, your center right and left, or center, right, left. Get that right there. And then one side will start on one side and the other will go toward each other. Um, so typically this is not a solo game, but I've played many of these games just fine in solo. Um, simply through, uh, uh, instead of holding a hand of cards, you would uh, you could draw a couple and then um, choose the best one. And what I usually do is I'll draw two for that side that's acting. Uh, use the one I want to use for the moment time. You're not holding anything, so you're not worried with what the other side, you know, any, any knowledge of what the other cards are being held. So you draw two and then you discard the one you use. And then the other one goes in a reuse pile, a recycle pile. And so when the deck first runs out, you use the recycle pile, reshuffle that, and get those cards going through another time. And I usually try to do that twice. It's, it works great for a lot of games that are multiplayer, but use a card-driven action uh, uh, situation. So, or mechanic. So anyway, if you pick up Command & Colors Medieval, you're going to get 19 scenarios. You're going to get a mounted uh, map. You're going to get two uh, inspired action reference cards. You're going to get two player reference cards for the units. You're going to get three sheets of hexagonal overlays. One sheet of modification markers, counters. Five sheets of sticker labels. A big old bag of blocks to put those stickers on. A rule book that is rule book and playbook that is uh, 48 pages. You're going to get a deck of cards. So I'm not going to go in very long, is it? A deck of cards, and you're going to get eight custom dice. And that is everything that comes in command and colors, commands and colors medieval from. GMT Games, and designer Richard Borg. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!